extra small. The Balenciaga confidently and underneath they're very long, straight cut on the men's look where it looks, you know, dressing details like has split a uh, straight. I guess if you were like taller, you know, I usually wear like more baggy. So this is the large fit hood and as you can Yeah. <clears throat> uh, what's up everyone? Journey by Koi, back with another rough cut. Um, I'm actually refilming this due to how popular the big cult ended up being. Uh, first and foremost, if you're here watching this, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. It ended up doing a lot better than I thought it would. So really happy to see that. Um, Thank you for all the nice comments, the messages, all of that. I just appreciate everyone watching that video. If you're like new here, thank you for coming back to another video. And if you've been a long time viewer, super appreciate you always as well. I could talk forever about being grateful to all the viewers, but uh, you know, I just, I really just really do appreciate everyone who watches, comments, anything, you know, engages with the channel at all. So super appreciate it. You know, without further ado, let's get on to the pickups. All right, so starting off with the first pickup, we have the Balenciaga Hi, My Name is Demna hoodie. This hoodie was not officially a part of Fall Winter 2020, but it was released in the fall and winter of 2020. I got it in the black colorway, which I think it released in like a black and a red. I just can't see myself wearing like a solid red top. I just don't know if it's it feels like too much to me. So obviously black being, you know, one of the most ubiquitous and wearable colors just seems like, you know, a more pragmatic choice for me personally. It's super oversized and super distressed. I picked it up in a size small. I honestly feel like size small could fit literally anyone. It fits very oversized and it also fits very long. Um, I feel like lately a lot of the hoodies that are oversized are a bit cropped. So they're like, oversized but they're boxy but this one fits oversized and long which i really like it's kind of like a different silhouette to the ones you see nowadays it's kind of ironic because i feel like before oversized hoodies were very you know big and long and then started becoming more boxy and boxy and boxy and now if anything it's hard to see kind of an oversized hoodie that's also long so i really do like the fit of this hoodie it's super oversized, so you can even layer like underneath it as well with like sweaters and stuff, which I'll show on the on body. But obviously some of the basic details, it's got the hi hello, my name is Demna like sticker. It's like, you know, those like stickers for like writing your name on for, I guess, like meet, meet and greets. I'm sure, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about, but yeah, it says that. And then it has his name Demna here in... Um, what I presume to be his handwriting. Uh, if not, then that's kind of troll, but you know, I hope he would at least take the two seconds to write his name on his own hoodie, on his own name tag. But you know, who knows? Maybe some, maybe Devna assigned this to some lowly intern. He was like, hey, you loser, go copy my handwriting because I don't have the time to, to write this on this. <laughs> who knows? This um, type of like style of the name tag isn't unique to this hoodie at all. In fact, I think it was seen previously before this hoodie released in, so this hoodie released in fall winter 2020, but in spring summer 2020 of Vetmont, they actually released those like, hi, my name is Capitalism t-shirts and hoodies, as well as those like Vetmont for rent, which was like a very similar style. I remember at the time there was like this controversy, you know, I'm sure it was just a meme and it was just marketing, but it was like Demna, or like, it was like Guram from Vetmont saying that like Demna from Balenciaga copied Vetmont. You know, obviously I don't think it was serious. I'm pretty sure it was just marketing, but nowadays it does seem like they're not, like they're legitimately on like some, some worser terms than they certainly were in the past. Um, again, I don't know how real any of their beef is, but just something interesting to know. It definitely wasn't the first time that Demna used this kind of sticker or I don't even, you know, Demno or Gurum or whoever used this kind of like sticker idea. This is really the only print on the entire hoodie. The back is completely plain, uh, which I like, honestly, I kind of like a small pet peeve of mine is when they have a certain logo on the chest and then they have the exact same logo printed bigger on the back. I'm sure you guys all know what I'm talking about. 
I personally prefer it if it's one or the other, or if you're gonna have both a chest logo and a back logo, I just wish they were different. Like it seems kind of, I don't know, I just don't like it when it's the exact same thing, like a small chest hit, and then just like the exact same thing that's bigger on the back. I just don't like that personally. In terms of this collection, this was released, like I said, it was released in fall winter 2020, but not part of the fall winter 2020 collection. It was a part of an Apple, it was part of a collaboration with Apple Music. So um, at the time, I think they released like a hoodie, a t-shirt, a long sleeve, and a zip up hoodie. I think they're all pretty decent. If I could pick up the long sleeve, the zip up hoodie, and the hoodie, I probably would. Um, but obviously I don't really need all three. That's kind of just, you know, a waste. I just, I do think that the graphic is pretty cool. I believe, um, with the Apple Music collaboration, they also released like a playlist, like Demna's personal playlist. Again, I have no idea if these things are actually like his real playlist or it's just all a marketing thing. Like, you know, maybe he didn't even write this. Like he asked an intern to copy his handwriting and then he asked an intern to, you know, make a playlist and call it his, you know, who knows like what's actually going on behind the scenes in terms of like design at Balenciaga. But this one, I just, I don't know. I guess I like this hoodie. Ironically, they have that new hoodie, the Be Different one, which is not an Apple music collaboration, at least officially, but yeah, they, they did have a couple in the past. You know, they had like a couple different collabs of music in general. You know, Demna in general has had quite a history of doing like different music collabs. He did the Ramstein one with Vetmont and then he did it again with Balenciaga and Balenciaga has done some other music collabs. You know, they have the um, like RuPaul or whatever, Pink Martini. Um, they had the, the latest like archive one, honestly, I don't know who any of them are. Um, I don't know if they like intentionally choose like lesser known artists or what. I mean, Ramstein is not lesser known, but the other ones like I've never, Aya Nakamura, like who, like who are these people like unironically? But uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty cool um, in general, the idea of like a, a bigger brand doing music merch. I know a lot of people might not like it, but for me at least, a lot of like artists, they do release their own merch, but it's always so lazy and uninspired. Like they just release some like terrible logo or like the worst thing you've ever seen printed on a super cheap, poorly fitting blank. Like I want to support these artists by purchasing their, their merch, but it's just so bad. Like I just can't bring myself to. So if Balenciaga ever did like a music collab with some artists that I actually liked and wanted to support, I would definitely cop it. Um, just because I feel like actually good looking and good fitting merch is so hard to come by because obviously these artists are not hiring like, you know, fashion designers or looking into like actual good blanks or whatever. They're just, you know, looking to make a quick buck by, by slapping their logo on like a cheap blank. So, you know, obviously I get it, but I would love to see some some more intent and design in, in artist merch. And I, and I would definitely support it for the artists that I like if they did. From a design standpoint, like I said, I really do like this hoodie. Um, there are a bunch of small like distressing details throughout the hoodie. Obviously I kind of poke fun about that in the big cult, but I really do like this hoodie. One thing to note about this hoodie is it's like straight black. I realized that's kind of fallen out of flavor in my personal wardrobe. I have a lot of darker or black clothes, but a lot of them are actually faded black. So having like a nice dark, just solid black color, I feel like is really refreshing and it makes it kind of like an elevated look. I don't know, obviously when you have like a faded black, it's a very um, kind of like vintagey, like lesser higher end look. But when you have this, you know, jet black, I feel like it can really work a lot better in your favor when you're dressing it up and um, Overall, I really do like this hoodie. I think it's a great piece. Um, I love all the details, the distressing details. I really like the, the chest print right here. I feel like it's subtle. It doesn't say Balenciaga anywhere, but if you know who Demna is, you know, you kind of just know. So I do appreciate that. And uh, I feel like if they made a hoodie with Apple Music nowadays, it would probably just say like, Balenciaga, Balenciaga 50 times on it and then like Apple Music or something cringe. So, you know, I'm glad they at least did something right once in their 
history, but uh, <laughs> though I can pick that up instead of having to look at these newer pieces, which are all eyesores. But um, yeah, the Balenciaga. Hi, my name is Demna Hoodie in collaboration with Apple Music released in the fall winter of 2020 with a bunch of distressing details. All right, and next up I have another hoodie. This time it's a zip-up hoodie. This is the Balenciaga Sporty B zip-up hoodie um, in this black faded colorway. You know, I've been looking for the perfect hoodie for years. I feel like a lot of people into fashion, you know, they're always looking for that one perfect hoodie, whether it be like a pullover or a zip hoodie. This one is not it, unfortunately. Um, it is very, very, very close. There are just like a few small details that I really feel like if they fixed, this would be the perfect zip up hoodie, but it is very close. So I'm just wearing it for now until I find the perfect zip up hoodie. There are a couple that I do have my eye on. Um, so maybe those are the perfect zip up hoodies, but for now this one will more than do. That kind of makes it sound like I don't like this piece, which is not true. I absolutely love this piece, but I just said that just to say like, it's not perfect, but it's very, very, very close. This one was released, I believe in spring, summer 22. It's hard to actually get a lot of information or find this piece online because it was not a runway piece. So as far as I know, there was actually only one retailer that sold this. I don't know if that's true, but there was only one that I saw selling this. So it's a very limited hoodie. I also for the longest time thought that this was small fit. I don't know if that's true. I think it might be a regular fit. It's certainly not like a large oversized fit, that's for sure, but it's either a small or a regular fit. I'm not 100% sure. Regardless, I got this in a size medium. It fits amazing. Um, I love the fit. I love the color. I love how low key it is. There's no branding anywhere except for on the hood, there's like a little bit of a embroidery there, like a Balenciaga Sporty B embroidery, as well as like some small hits on the zipper. But I mean, that's, you know, whatever. My point is there isn't really any logo, so you can eat, wear it very easily all the time. I will say, I wish I had a chance to try this on in a size small, just because I feel like it's just ever so slightly big in some places. You know, again, I have no idea if this is a medium fit or a small fit. I, for the longest time, thought it was a small fit and I still kind of do think it's a small fit, but there were some people saying that it was a medium fit. So again, I have no idea. Um, but I think the problem is, you know, because it's so rare and so hard to find this hoodie and find like information about this hoodie, I really wish I could give you guys more like accurate information, but the truth is I just don't know. Because it is so rare, it's hard to find this hoodie as well. If this ever popped up in a size small, I would probably buy it just because I, you know, it's so hard to come by these and I would love to see how a size small fit on me just because a size medium, like I said, it fits super, super well, but I just think a sm size small might be a little bit better. In terms of like the good details about this hoodie, it's dual zip. I feel like that's kind of a, a standard for a lot of hoodies nowadays, at least like more expensive hoodies, allows you to zip it up and down. I feel like that's should be pretty standard nowadays. I really dislike hoodies that don't zip up and down or that aren't dual zip. I feel like it also allows you to fit it and wear it a little bit differently just because it, it, it allows for different shapes of the hoodie, especially because it is a zip up. You know, that's kind of the whole point is being able to wear it open, closed, different zip arrangements, I guess. Another thing about this that I like is that it's French terry. I think I mentioned this before. I really, really dislike cotton fleece, so French Terry is almost like a, a make or break kind of thing for hoodies for me. Ironically, the Demna hoodie that I just showed was cotton fleece. I think I forgot to mention that, but it's whatever. It is what it is. Um, I would much, much prefer French Terry though. If given the option, I would choose French Terry 100% of the time. Uh, like I said, the fit on this is really, really good, as well as the fact that it's very minimally branded. It's not obnoxious, so it's very easy to throw on with like literally any outfit, and it pretty much always looks good. It's very cozy, you know, it's got the pockets, you know, you just throw this on and you're comfortable and the fit is pretty decent. Of course, like I said, it's not perfect. There are just a couple things about this hoodie that I personally wish were changed. The first one is that it's kind of got, and I noticed 
a lot of Balenciaga hoodies do this, the bottom of the zip area is like a little bit curvy. I don't know if it's gonna pick up well on the camera right now, but of course I'll do B-roll for everything, but it's like a little bit curvy. So when you have it zipped up all the way and closed, it has like a little bit of a curvy shape, which I really dislike. This can be very easily alleviated by simply unzipping the bottom just a tiny bit. So if you ever see me wear this, I often do that because it relaxes like the curviness of it when it's on body. Um, again, I'll show this more in like close-ups and stuff like that, but that kind of bothers me and I wish that it was less curvy. Um, I don't know why that is or like what makes that happen, but it is something to note when you zip it up all the way, just the bottom looks kind of curvy and kind of makes you look fat a little bit, which I don't like. Another thing that I really dislike about this hoodie is the, well, I don't really dislike it, but it's, I just would prefer if it was different is the hood. So the hood is actually a large hood. I don't know how many people know this, but Balenciaga hoods, like the actual hood part of their hoodies or even some of their jackets as well, are differently sized. So what I mean by that is some of them are very small. Like the actual hood is very small, it's very tight when you wear it. And some of them are just normal hoods and then some of them are very large. Like this one is the large hood size. A lot of the hoodies in this era were like that. For example, you can tell on the um, like uh, Paris, uh, the 22, the Polo Ralph Lauren, that that hoodie also has the large fit and you can tell even just through like product pictures how big the hood is. Um, normally when you wear the hood, the point of that, I believe, I this was never explicitly stated, um, but I believe the point of that is so that when you wear this hood over like a hat or a beanie, it fits very comfortably and it looks very good in my opinion with when you wear the hood over a hat or a beanie. Um, just because the extra size allows for the hood to be kind of fully over um, because oftentimes with smaller hoods or even regular fitting hoods, because the hood is kind of small, it, it raises the rest of the shoulders and kind of the whole sweater or jacket up a little bit, um, which is a look that I personally don't like. You know, if some people might like it to each their own, but one thing that the larger hood larger fitting hood provides is that you can put it fully over the hat, the beanie, whatever, and it'll still fit very comfortably and even have some room left over. So in that sense, I really do like it. The problem is when you have the large fit and you're not wearing a hat or a beanie or anything on your head, it fits almost comically large, like to the point where I wouldn't even wear the hood without anything. Overall, just a super dope piece. Um, I've had this for like almost a year. Honestly, most, if not all the pickups in this video are quite old, to be honest. Close to a year old, if not more, just because I was saving them all for the rough cut for the big cult. But yeah, it's, I mean, I've owned this for like almost a year. I wear this all the time. This is by far the most worn item in this pickups video. I mean, even to this day, almost every single time I go out, I'm wearing this uh, zip up hoodie. Amazing fit. Um, the shorter length makes it pretty cool to layer with as well with like longer t-shirts. Yeah, just super basic, like a really, like a, just a super basic zip up hoodie done 99% right. I'm still looking for the actual perfect zip up hoodie, but this one is more than good enough for now. Yeah, it just looks good with everything. The Balenciaga Sporty B zip up hoodie. All right, next up, one of the big boys, the Balenciaga garderobe coat. I'm not even gonna attempt to show this one on camera. I'll just B-roll this for the most part. This is the Balenciaga garderobe double-breasted hourglass coat. Super dope. It's got a bunch of things that I look for in a coat. For example, the shoulder pads. It's got like an hourglass shape at the waist. One thing that you might not think about at first glance or notice that I really appreciate about this coat is that it's a polyester blend. I know that the first initial reaction to that is gonna be, oh, that's cheap, or, you know, I would much prefer cotton or wool. And, um, you know, that might be true for some people, but for this specific instance, at least for me personally, I feel like the polyester is so much better for a couple reasons. The first one is that it makes it just so much more comfortable. It's hard to explain over camera, but it's actually got a bit of like a stretch to the fabric. Normally things that are like in this nature of clothing, like 
blazers, suit jackets, or like long coats like this are often very rigid and very uncomfortable. And at least for me, when they are rigid and uncomfortable, I just don't want to wear them. But because of the polyester blend, it's a lot lighter, it's a lot more stretchy. So it just makes it so much more wearable and so much easier to wear. It's just very fluid and I feel like you don't feel really like any constriction at all when you're wearing this jacket, which I don't feel the same way about like other blazers or suit jackets or long coats. The second reason that I think the polyester blend helps so much is that it gives it like a unique sheen, like a different look to them. I know the lighting is super awful right now. I'm sorry, uh, it's raining outside and I'm just trying to film this video when I have time and it happens to be now and unfortunately it's raining. But of course, like I said, I'll do B-rolls for all of this. But the sheen gives it like a different look. Like usually when you think of like black coats, they're very just black and it makes it very serious and it makes it almost feel like the only way you can wear this is if you're like from the 1980s mafia or like going to the, the opera or something like that. But because of the polyester blend, it's actually got a bit of a sheen to it. I hope I can do some B-roll which picks it up because I really do think it's a nice touch to this jacket that kind of separates it from the other just traditional normal black coats. I think it also makes it a bit more modern and a bit more wearable. Um, just like overall a contemporary taste. I'm not saying that this is more timeless or anything like that with the polyester blend, but to me, it's just a lot more wearable. It's a bit more contemporary. It's just to my liking. That's that's what I'm trying to say. Like, obviously, it's still a double-breasted coat, um, so it is still, you know, more serious and structured and formal than, say, like a single-breasted coat or like a car coat, um, but, you know, it's still, it makes it less formal and, and and more easy to wear compared to other double-breasted coats. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. This is quite a long coat. It is floor length, which I understand might not be for everyone, but I really like floor length coats. The back has a bit of a like vent seam as well as it has a lot of just like small details that I think really make me enjoy the coat a lot more. For example, the buttons are very large and oversized, which I like. Um, you know, it's got the inside lining. It's got two side pockets here. Um, the inside lining has garter robe written all over it. So the hype beast in me is satisfied. <laughs> and then it's got some inside pockets as well. I think the location of the outside pockets is very clever. Um, what I mean by that is when you have this coat buttoned up, the location of the pockets on the garment kind of exaggerates the hourglass shape. It's gonna be hard to show you holding up like this, but I'll do some B-roll so you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure that that design was intentional because it just fits so perfectly. Like the shape of the pockets and kind of the extra fabric and like where it's positioned on the coat, like kind of laterally as well, really is like the perfect location to accentuate that hourglass shape. I think that it's the perfect amount of hourglass too. I know that on the women's hourglass coats, they're very hourglassy, maybe a little bit too much for men, but this one is like the perfect amount of hourglass for me as like a male. You know, I'm, sh I'm not saying that like guys can't wear the women version. I just personally don't like that amount of hourglassness or whatever you want to call it. Overall, just a super sick coat. You can kind of use it as the standout piece. You can kind of just throw it on over an outfit and I think it just looks good. So the Balenciaga garter robe, double breasted coat. All right, and one of the most controversial, meme-worthy pants, the Balenciaga Trump Lowell double waistband sweatpants or whatever they're called. Um, these were from Autumn Winter 21, I believe, Afterworld. You know, I think a lot of people love them, a lot of people hate them, but I do think that this is like very Demna. Demna has always played with Trump Lowell since, you know, his Vetmont days, all the way, you know, now into Balenciaga. You see it all the time. And it was almost certainly influenced by his time under Margiela, but I just think that he plays a lot with Trump Lowell in general. And, you know, whether you like it or hate it, you know, it's definitely pretty central tenet of his design language. There really isn't too much to say about these sweats. Obviously, they're just kind of a gray pair of sweatpants with the boxer stitched in or like half of the boxer stitched in. I really like the colors that they chose. It sounds kind of stupid to say, but I think like the red and green pattern of the boxers matches really well with like the Heather gray of the sweats. In terms of like details about this pant, it's got zipper pockets, which 
I think is always a nice touch. I'm always down for zipper pockets. Obviously, it's got the boxer stitch in. It says Balenciaga right here. Um, it does have two like drawstrings for closure, which I usually hide. I know some people like to show them, but I personally hide them. The boxer actually does have a button here that's fully functional. What I typically do is I tuck the boxers, I'm, I'm sorry, I tuck the drawstrings into the boxers. So you can see here are the drawstrings and here's where they come out from the pants. So I tuck them into the hole of the boxers like this but a lot of people tuck them out so that it's actually visible. I usually keep the waistband up like this, but you can also fold the waistband over to create a longer boxer like ratio, I guess. So there are different ways to wear this pant as simple as it may seem. It is a cotton fleece, which as you know, for me is a huge downside, but it is what it is. Um, the pant overall is actually quite heavy. It's a very thick sweat pant, like a thick and heavy sweat pant. So this is perfect for the winter time. It's honestly to the point where it might be a little bit too warm for a lot of people if you wanna to try to wear this in the spring or summertime. No pockets on the back, which if you know me, I prefer no pockets on the back. Overall, the fit of these is very long and very baggy. I got them in a size extra small and they are still absurdly long and absurdly baggy. I don't know who could fit these normally. I really don't see anyone being able to fit these normally unless you're like a basketball player or something just because the length is so ridiculous. Like I said, I got these in a size extra small. I believe the smallest size was an extra extra small, which would probably be better for me, but it's so close. I'm not gonna look for an extra extra small just for that small sizing difference. It's fine. One thing that I will say about these sweatpants that I think is not really gonna be talked about that much by like, cause this is a very hype beast Balenciaga pickup. I will admit that it's worn by a lot of, you know, the Balenciaga hype beasts. Um, but one thing that I think is cool about these sweatpants is that because of the boxer construction, like the double layered construction, as well as the pockets, it's actually got like a bit of a shape around the hips. And what I mean by that is it has like an interesting shape around kind of the waist hip area. It kind of makes your hips look a little bit wider. Like it's not just like, a lot of sweatpants are just like a straight leg down the sweatpant, but this one has like a bit of a different shape in that when you wear it, it kind of has like a bit of shape around the hips. I don't know if that's intentional or if that's just because, you know, the pockets have a bit of a shape with the zipper and they're a bit thicker and something to do with the double waistband design. I'd like to believe it's intentional because I really like that design and I think that it kind of creates an interesting shape and makes the sweatpants a bit more special. You know, they're not just like a normal straight leg pair of sweatpants, like just another detail to add to the sweatpants basically. And I really like the silhouette. It's not like, I don't want just details just for the sake of being details. I wanna like the details. And I really do like the kind of wider hips. It almost looks like birthing hips. Uh, so, you know, if you're not into that, you're not into it. But I, I think, okay, that, that probably sounds a lot worse than it is, but when it's on body, it looks better. You know, at least in my opinion, you know, you can be the judge, but in my opinion, I think it looks better on body. One thing interesting about these pair of sweatpants, um, it does have the Sporty B embroidery right here in gray. If you Google these, there are some product pictures with the Sporty B logo in black. As far as I know though, that was never actually produced. So my guess is that originally maybe Balenciaga had a sample or they were planning to go with the black one. So they sent out the stock pictures of the black ones to all the retailers and then they just uploaded the black one. But as far as I know, that was never actually produced. The final production pair has this gray embroidery here, which I prefer so much more. I'm so glad they didn't go with the black one because I feel like the black one it's just so obnoxious. Like I personally hate it when it's just like, oh look, it says Balenciaga right here or it has a logo, you know. It's Balenciaga, like what? It's Balenciaga guys, it's Balenciaga, oh my God. It's, he's wearing Balenciaga pants, no way. Like I just don't like that. I think the tonal on tonal embroidery is so much better. It's also not even that subtle. Like if it's on camera, maybe you're not gonna be able to tell, but in real life, like you can very clearly see the embroidery still. So it's not like it's not that subtle. At face value, I think obviously this is a very meme worthy and controversial pair of sweatpants. I think they got a lot of like cultural appropriation, backlash and stuff like that. I really do like these sweatpants for, for what they're worth. I think they are more than kind of what you see at face value. I know I meme these a lot in the big cult, but 
I, I obviously like them. I mean, I bought them and I wear them. So last thing is that I noticed a lot of Balenciaga pants nowadays are super long and super baggy to the point where like they're gonna drag on the floor. I'm not a huge fan of heel bite and like my pants actually dragging along the floor and getting ripped. I know some people are more into that. I think Balenciaga's solution is like their everly increasing size of their shoes, which I think is kind of funny. It's like they created their own problem by having such ridiculously wide and long pants that they make their own solution, which is like even bigger Balenciaga shoes, which can support such a such a wide and baggy pair of pants. I think it's so interesting. It's almost like they created a problem and then they created their own solution so that like if you wanted to buy Balenciaga pants, you almost have to buy like Balenciaga shoes as well, which I think is kind of troll. Maybe that's their another part of their ever evolving marketing design, but it's just like kind of an interesting anecdote I was thinking of. But overall, in my opinion, super sick pair of sweatpants. Again, I know they're probably not going to be for everyone, but I, and I understand, but I really like them. So the Balenciaga, uh, fall winter 21 afterworld trump lowell double waisted sweatpants or boxer sweats or whatever they're called yeah All right, and moving on to the only non-Balenciaga pickup in this video, the Acne Studios 2021 M jeans. This one is in the faded black or like gray colorway. I don't remember the official name. These ones are in a size 33 by 34, which is quite large. Uh, I am normally a size in between a 30 and 32, and then my inseam is usually like a 32. So I went up a couple sizes and these actually actually already fit like a little bit big. So the reason why I wanted to size up on these is because at the time of buying these, I was really into those Balenciaga large baggy pants or jeans or whatever they're called. They're like really balloon, super, super wide ones. If you guys know what I'm talking about, they released like maybe a year or two ago. Um, I was really into those. I actually own them, but they were so ridiculously large. And I had a size extra small, by the way. I had a size extra small and it was so ridiculous big that I literally could not wear it without it falling down like it could not stay on my hips so I don't know if that's the case for everyone else I I mean I know that they made a size extra extra small in those but that would have been my only chance to even have a chance at wearing them you know they're cool but they just weren't for me I don't know why they were so big I don't know if everyone just belts them or like I mean I think the shape is cool you know they're pretty big but you know, whatever. Anyway, that's why I got these and I sized up because I wanted them to fit wider than a normal kind of straight or wideish pair of pants or jeans or whatever. These fit, I would say though, pretty straight. Like they're not very wide. I even sized up a couple sizes, like I mentioned, and they're still not necessarily like wide, like the Balenciaga pants, which I now think is a good thing. Looking back, I don't know how well those Balenciaga large baggy jeans have aged. Maybe I would have a different opinion if, you know, I saw them more or I got my correct size, but I really do think these jeans are good. I think Acne in general is a very underrated brand. I think maybe their problem is they release so much and they release so much trash <laughs> that like people don't look at their good stuff, but at least their denim like their jeans is very solid across the board. So I would highly recommend if you're looking for a pair of jeans to look into Acne. They have so many different sizes and cuts. They do sizing, like they have every single waist size, like a 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, and then they have different inseam lengths and everything. So you can really kind of min max the exact size that you want. Like I said, these are a size 33 by 34. I did want them to fit long, but I wasn't considering, because they're so big in the waist, they don't actually fit on my waist and they kind of sag down a little bit to my hips. And even then they're like barely hanging on to my hips. So because they sit lower on my body, the 34 inseam, which already would have been long on me, is like absurdly long. So I'm constantly stepping on these. And like I just mentioned, I'm not a fan of heel bite or anything like that, or my jeans getting legitimately ripped. Like maybe a little bit of distressing at the hems or something, but I don't want them completely torn. So I'm probably gonna get these hemmed a little bit just so that, you know, they're not just like, cause they get like all the way underneath my shoe sometimes, which is, not, I'm not a fan of, I hate the feeling of stepping on my pants. I don't know how people do it, to be honest, but, you know, if you like that, you know, more power to you, but I am 
heavily considering getting these hemmed in the near future. One thing that I really do like about Acne Denim is that on the back pockets, they don't have any design. Like it's just a square or, you know, whatever it is, a trapezoid or which I, I don't know geometry, but uh, you know, they don't like, for example, like a lot of jeans might have like some sort of stitching here or some sort of design. I, it's not like a huge deal. It's not like a make or break for me. It's not like I won't buy jeans with some sort of design on the pocket, but I just prefer jeans without a design on the back pocket. So I do really appreciate that Acne doesn't because I feel like a lot of brands nowadays do. Other details, they've got like a little black leather pouch here says Acne Studios. Again, I appreciate that it's black on black. It's very tonal. It's very subtle. It doesn't scream anything, which I prefer. The fit of these is amazing. I really like the way these look. The fade, um, the way they, they kind of sit on my legs is a very nice look. Like I said, it's Originally, I got these inspired by the Balenciaga large baggy pants, but they don't fit like that at all. I would say they fit very straight. And if anything, I feel like they almost have like a slimming effect on your legs. So if you're looking for a pair of jeans that kind of makes you look a bit slimmer, I would, I would also consider looking into these as well. If you're looking for like a straight, slimming kind of cut, maybe look into the 2021 M jeans. One thing that I am not a fan about acne denim is that they do a lot of contrast stitching. So for example, for this faded black gray pair or whatever, they do a lot of like pink stitching. So if you were to cuff these jeans, you know, they would see the pink there. Um, they also have pink like in random places, like in the back, the back pocket there, they have like a little bit of a pink stitching there. I just think it's a little bit cringe. You know, I understand if, I understand they're trying to do their own like special little flair to the jeans, but just make it normal, man. Like, I don't know. I don't need it to be pink there. In fact, I would prefer it if it wasn't pink. Um, I, I can't even, I will never be able to cuff these jeans because of the pink there. It just makes it look so much cheaper, tacky, and like kind of cringe in my opinion. Um, but you know, those ones are fine because at least you can hide them. And at least the back pocket ones are very subtle. Like it's not like you kind of have to get up close to see them. So at least it's not like some crazy contrast stitching, you know? Lastly, you know, button fly, pretty standard nowadays, even though I prefer zipper. Um, it's got pocket here. It's got a bunch of little rivets. All the rivets say Acne Studios, which is a nice little touch. But yeah, overall, just a super nice, I love the fade, I love the color. I wear this a lot with the Balenciaga Sporty B zip up hoodie because they're both kind of a faded black. And I just think I'm not a huge jeans guy overall. I'm much more of a trouser guy or a sweatpant guy. I'm just not a huge jeans guy in general, but I figured, you know, I, I should at least have one. I really like the fit. Um, I just think you can't go wrong with it. It's a very nice straight fit. You know, it's got a nice slimming effect on your legs. So uh, overall, a really great pickup. I've also owned this one for quite some time and I wear this a lot. And like I said, I'm not a jean person. So if I wear a pair of jeans a lot, it's kind of a testament to them. So, you know, I think Acne has definitely been killing it with their denim lately. They've been killing it in general with a lot of other pieces too. I do think they're pretty underrated. I can understand the sentiment sometimes because they release a lot of garbage and some of their prices are can be pretty up there. But if you take the time to look for gems, I really do think Acne has some gems out there. So yeah, the Acne Studios 2021 M jeans in this faded black uh, colorway. Super dope, super great pickup. Another one that I wear quite often. All right, last but not least. Actually, this one's probably legitimately the least. Like, I like this pickup the worst. So this is legitimately last and it's least. Um, this is the Balenciaga Heavy Piercing Cap from Spring Summer 23. One thing they were right about is the heaviness. I don't know if you guys have ever held this in your hand, but it is a very heavy hat. Um, in fact, I might actually weigh this after just to see how heavy it is compared to a normal hat because it is quite heavy. Like it does weigh a considerable amount. When this hat first came out, I really, really, really liked it. It's got obviously the piercing and the heavy piercing refers to these little things right here. It's also got some piercing on the back here, but you know, if you know, like older K-pop style hats. I don't know if this was a K-pop specific or a Korea specific thing, or maybe an Asian thing, but they had a lot of black caps with like silver piercings on them. 
I don't know. It was a pretty big trend in Korea and in K-pop at the time. I don't know. Again, I don't know the origins, but that's immediately what I first thought when I saw this cap. You know, the piercings here, very reminiscent, you know, of also things like Peace Minus One, um, G-Dragon's brand. Just like hats with like a little something, you know, on the side, whether it be a piercing or, you know, whatever. Just some like small detail on the side. One thing I do appreciate about the piercings on this hat is the location. I know it sounds kind of simple to say but it's it's very nice that it's on the brim kind of in the front part of the hat and then a little bit on the side and the reason why I'm saying that is because if you were to wear like a hood or something over over the hat you can see the piercings kind of poking out which I think is a very good design choice because even if you're wearing a hood and they can't see the rest of the hat they just need to see the piercings and you know it adds a nice little touch to the outfit. I know that they have done other piercing caps since this has released you know they did the stupid 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 one that says balenciaga.com or whatever and then has the one straight in the middle horrendous i hope to god that they can't sell those somehow and they have to donate them to like africa or something because i i hope that no one buys it i truly hope that zero hats are sold of those by balenciaga um, they've also done other hats more recently with like those like screw looking things or i don't have like carpentry knowledge but those like little nuts and bolts also terrible you know balenciaga has gone pretty crazy with piercings overall lately they're in like a piercing phase um, as in usual Balenciaga fashion, you know, they find something popular and then they have to milk it for all it's worth until it's cringe. And then it also creates like a taint on your old pieces. Like this used to be cool, but now there's so many cringe piercing pieces that it's like you tainted the legacy of your old stuff, you know? It's like the triple S or like all of, you know, that old stuff. They overdid it and they killed it to a point where it's like cringe almost. That was kind of a side tangent. Sorry about that. Uh, the piercings themselves, <laughs> let's get back to the hat. The piercings themselves are pretty cool. Um, I like that they're all kind of different. They actually kind of move a little bit, which is pretty cool. They say Balenciaga on them, which is a nice touch for the hype beasts out there. The one on the back is kind of just like a little two parts poking out here on the back strap. Velcro strap, as most Balenciaga caps are. I know that some Balenciaga caps actually have like a, a strap closure, which I would like to see them do more. The hat itself also has like a bunch of cool little distressing details all throughout. The hat itself is not, it's like a kind of faded black. Yeah, it's got like distressing all over the brim, you know, the hat. You know, it's got some pretty cool details to it. Now, since I've got it though, my love for this hat has slowly, you know, kind of decreased and decreased a little bit. And one of the main problems of it is the fit. I got it in a size large, which is a size 59 centimeters. I always get size large in Balenciaga caps. And one of the reason is Balenciaga caps have a tendency to fit very shallow and small. So one thing that I mean by that is that the actual like spherical like part of the hat is very small and I don't like that at all. So I always get the size large because it's the biggest, biggest sphere. Um, they usually do their sizing in like small, medium, large for those that didn't know. Um, I think it's usually like 55 is a small 57 is a medium and 59 is a large. But anyway, Balenciaga caps have a tendency to fit very narrow and small. And I knew that going in, but I love the piercing so much that I still bought the hat and I still wore it. I still really like, I honestly like the hat. Like I'm trying to, it's kind of sounding like I really hate the hat, which is not the case at all. I'm just, you know, giving you my honest opinions and review on the cap. But Balenciaga caps overall have a tendency to fit very shallow and small so when you wear this on your head i'll just put it on so you guys can kind of know what i'm talking about they fit very small first of all that's like something that people might not notice if they don't own a balenciaga cap but i'll compare this to like the sizing of a normal cap and you will see the difference it's quite significant like it's not like a small amount it's quite significantly noticeable how small this is and then it's also very narrow so what i mean by that is like this distance from like the bottom whatever this is called of the hat to the top is very small. Like let's say a normal cap is like this amount. The Balenciaga cap is a lot less. So it's a very shallow cap to wear. So at least for me and my preferences of hats, it's not like a very great looking fit 
in my opinion, on me. So I usually look for hats that are, if anything, a bit deeper and a bit bigger because I think that it suits my, I don't know what it is, like the head shape or the face shape, my hair, my whatever. I just think that those kind of hats look better on me and they fit better on me. Again, I did know that Balenciaga caps fit that way going into getting this, but because I liked it so much, I still bought it anyway. I've owned this for quite some time now and I just, I could never fully shake that feeling of the hat just fitting a little bit off. For those out there that have worn Balenciaga caps and know what I'm talking about and prefer the shallow and smaller fit, then that's great. I'm just saying for me personally, I'm not a fan. Another detail about this hat is that it does say Balenciaga embroidered right here, kind of on the underneath the brim, which I think is a really nice place to put branding. Again, if you're wearing the hat like this, you know, you can't even see the Balenciaga embroidery, but if you know, you somehow tilt up or look to the side, then you'll be able to see it. I think they could have even taken it a step further by by having the Balenciaga embroidery in black as opposed to white. I don't like it when there's so much contrast. It's almost like paradoxical in a way where they put the embroidery in a place that would be pretty hard to see. So you'd think that they want it to be subtle, but then when you see it, it's in white and it just screams Balenciaga right in your face. So it's like, did you want it to be subtle? Did you not? Like, I don't know, but um, I do kind of like how it kind of curves along the brim. You know, I like the location. I like everything about it. I don't even hate the fact that it's white. I just would have preferred it to be in a different color, like maybe a, a black or like a faded black color like the hat. I think it would have been, you know, cool. Uh, that's all I'm saying. Lastly, one thing I will touch upon is the notch. You know, a lot of Balenciaga caps, I haven't even seen many recently that have released without the notch. Obviously, for those that didn't know, first of all, the notch is for like sunglasses. So if you're wearing sunglasses with the hat, the notch allows for more space for like the bigger eyed sunglasses so you can still wear it without the hat being pushed up, which I think is a really clever design. Um, I saw kind of something similar to this all the way back in Demna's Vetmont time. But as far as I know, that hat was never released, even though it looks super sick. So I kind of wish she just released that hat. I think that hat looks super cool, but um, that's kind of a side tangent. The reason why I bring up the notches specifically is because the actual notch shape has varied quite a bit, both in terms of the different hats released as well as the eras. So when the notches were first released, they were a very sharp and like a small aggressive notch, like just one tiny notch that goes kind of deep in like this. And I absolutely hated that notch shape. I was not a fan of it at all. I think it looked kind of almost like out of place with how aggressively it went in, but also how narrow the actual notch shape was. However, since then, they've actually done different notch types. So for example, the heavy piercing one, as you can see, it's not very curvy at all. In fact, it's very jagged almost. And it's also a lot shallower and it's also a lot longer. So I much, much, much prefer when the notches are less aggressively deep and kind of they're so small in the old ones, but with this one, I think they did a better job with the notch shape. I haven't seen them use this notch shape since. I think the newer caps, they're doing a good job of making it a bit shallower and a bit longer, which is to my preference. I will also say I have not personally uh, tried on the newer hats themselves, but I have heard that the newer hats do fit a bit deeper and a bit bigger. Um, like I said, with this hat, because it fits so kind of shallow and small on my head, I'm just not a fan of that fitting style of the cap. So if the new caps are both kind of deeper and bigger, and they also have a good notch shape, I might look into those instead of this cap, because like I said, I got this initially knowing that, but I was like, I love the piercing so much that, you know, maybe I can make it work. And I did, but I just, it, just the fit is a little bit off for me. So hopefully, you know, the new caps, that is true and they do fit a bit deeper and a bit bigger because that would be much to my preference. I do like the notches. Um, I just think that the notch shape needs to be right. Overall though, I think this is a really sick hat. I can totally see why it's such a popular hat as well. You know, I just think it's a good hat. It's just not, I just wish it fit a little bit better. That's all, um, but yeah. That's, that's enough talking for me. That was quite a bit of talking. This was the summer 23 heavy piercing cap from Balenciaga. And uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and see these pieces on body. All right, yo, um, welcome back to another Rough Cut. Um, so for those of you who don't know or are new, um, first of all, welcome and thank you for watching. But the Rough Cuts are basically like a supplemental video where I talk about the pieces that I showed in the JBC show episodes. So, in this case, 
the this is going to be the rough cut for the big cult and um yeah these are i'm just going to talk about some of the pieces that i talked about in the big cult so the first outfit i got on i have on the balenciaga my name is demna hoodie um, and then underneath i have a black uniqlo turtleneck um, just for like some layering and then i've got on these trousers from zara they're actually like a slim straight cut and then I've got on my Balenciaga Rhino Derbies. Um, so the inspiration for this fit was kind of like oversized top, skinnier bottoms. Um, I know I usually wear like more baggy clothes, but I think the silhouette is actually pretty nice. Um, the Demna hoodie is very oversized. It's a size small and, you know, you can see it fits pretty big. It's actually like got a lot of cool distressing details, like has some rips here all along the sleeves. I think it's got some like holes. I don't even know where they are. You probably can't see because I'm wearing a black turtleneck underneath as well, but it's got like holes, you know, all throughout, like random distressing. I think it's got some stuff on the back too. Um, yeah, so it's like actually pretty detailed. I mean, it's not just like a black hoodie. I mean, it is, but you know, it's got a little bit more to it, you know, like some little marks here and there some distressing on the pocket, just like really cool details, but it is like very oversized. Um, and I wore this turtleneck underneath. This one is from Uniqlo. Um, I've just been trying to like try new things and I tried the turtleneck under the hoodie and I actually really like the way it looks. So, and it also keeps you like a bit warmer cause it is pretty cold right now. Um, and then the bottoms are like some really old trousers. These are from Zara. Um, like I said, they're kind of like a slimmer cut. And then I've got the Balenciaga Rhino Derbies on feet. Normally I wear these shoes with like baggier pants, but I think it looks okay with like this slimmer silhouette as well. I really do like this outfit quite a bit. I think it works pretty well. Um, I know it's like a cop out, all black, you know, what's new, kind of like a Balenciaga fit, but I really do like this fit. I like the silhouette, you know, I think it's pretty cool. Um, you could wear the hood too, but I usually don't wear the hood if I'm being honest. Um, but yeah, this is like pretty decent fit. Um, obviously for the big cult, it's gonna be about this Demna hoodie, which is, you know, kind of like a classic. It's from their Apple Music collaboration um, where he like released a playlist or something. I don't know what Demna listens to. I don't even know if his music taste is good, but uh, yeah, so this is gonna be the first fit. I got on the turtleneck from Uniqlo, uh, Balenciaga Demna hoodie. Zara trousers, and then the Balenciaga Rhino Derbies on feet. So yeah. All right, next fit, um, I've got on kind of like a, another wintry fit. Um, all these fits are gonna be like more fall wintry, um, just because it's the fall winter, at least where I live. Um, so it's pretty cold and I'd imagine it's the same for everyone watching, unless you live in like Australia where it's the summer, but if you live in Australia, you know, you're fucking weird, mate, and you probably don't deserve happiness. Uh, just kidding. But uh, yeah, so next fit, um, I got on the Yeezy jacket. This is the Yeezy Season 3 jacket. I talked about this in a previous video, so I'm not going to go too in-depth. But, you know, it's super warm. It's like lined. Um, it's got pockets everywhere. Super cool jacket, honestly. Um, and then I just have a normal plain black t-shirt. This one is... Dries van Noten, but it doesn't really matter. Oh, I also have the GameCube cap. I forgot about that. Super cool cap. I like this cap a lot. And then I have on the Balenciaga Sporty B baggy sweats. No, no, no. Uh, for the pants, I have the Balenciaga Trump Lowell double waistband boxer sweats. Um, they've got like a little embroidery here. The pockets are zip, which is actually kind of nice. You know, I like the zip pockets. Um, one thing I will say, these sweats are a size extra small. Um, so you can just see how baggy they fit. They fit me absolutely huge. Like they're really big in the thigh all the way down. Like all Balenciaga, it seems like they're very long um, as well. So yeah, keep in mind, this is an extra small, like a size extra small is this. I can't even like imagine what the bigger sizes would be, but really glad I got the extra small. Um, and then on feet, I have the Takahiro Miyashita Suikoke, the Soloist Suikoke, the five finger Vibram shoes. Um, pretty like 
cool shoes in my opinion. I, I just like the way they look, honestly. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I, re I think this fit is pretty sick. Um, despite these being the Trump Lowell double waistband, I rarely actually wear them. Like I wouldn't tuck in my shirt to do this. I just think it looks kind of cringe. If you're, maybe if you like super sag these and then you're wearing something more cropped, it like could work. But for the most part, I don't really, I don't like show off the boxers. Uh, oh yeah, one thing I can note is that if you see here, they actually have drawstrings. So like the drawstrings come out and if you do want to wear them like out, like I see some people do this as well. Personally, I think this is like kind of cringe and I don't think it looks good at all. So I just tuck the, um, the drawstrings like inside. They actually have like a full, like a place you can put them into. <laughs> um, Hold on, let me see if I can actually, like there's an actual like hole, like there's an actual button in the boxers and all that. Okay, whatever. I'm just gonna tuck them in for now just so that kind of awkward. But uh, yeah, these are the Trump Lowell sweats. These are obviously the ones featured in the Big Cult. Um, the jacket I have unzipped here, but you can also zip it up all the way. I do think this jacket looks pretty good zipped and unzipped. Um, it's got the two pockets on the side and I really like the hood shape of this jacket. I know this jacket wasn't part of the rough cut, but I might as well show the hood shape just because I think it's really cool, especially from like a side silhouette. Like if you did a full side um, silhouette of the hood, I think it's like a pretty cool, pretty cool look. And um, yeah, so this is going to be the next fit. Um, second fit for the JBC show up or for the rough cut and uh yeah yeah second fit um pretty whatever I don't know I like it I like this fit too so yeah sue me whatever okay next fit <laughs> okay and I just want to stress again by the way that these are a size extra small for the pants if you look at how wide the thigh is how long the rise is I mean just look at how long these pants are if I were to like actually let them go over they go fully over my my shoes. Like you can't even see the shoes, you know? Like I can literally hide my entire shoe underneath the pants. Um, conversely, what I could do is like pull up the pants super high. So here's where they are on my waist right now. If I were to like... <laughs> hey, what up guys? Journey by Koi. Back with another fit. Uh, yeah, this is one way to show off the boxers. <laughs> so yeah, again guys, this is a size extra small. I often find it quite ridiculous when I think of like Balenciaga sizing nowadays. Like this, there's no world in which this should be like an extra small, but it is. So, you know, steezing on them, styling. Okay. Wait, so, so Balenciaga <laughs> sizing is always like this? Uh, lately it is, for sure. I feel like maybe, you know, I don't know who is wearing the extra largest. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you think about this extra small, right? Bro, I could wear that. Yeah, extra. like... You look like, not even normal on me. Even, like, even American citizens obese American citizens would give Balenciaga sizing a run for their money because I feel like the extra large would you'd have to be like 500 pounds to like fit to like fit because this is an extra small like just think about how ridiculous that would look like like a like at least an XL yeah like this is any other brand this has got to be like triple XL but for Balenciaga yeah, this is, this is extra small in Balenciaga pant sizing. Um, again, I don't know who, like, I'm not even that short. I'm like 5'10". That's not like crazy short. Like, I'm not tall, but I'm not like short, you know? But like, you would have to be like 7'2 to wear these and not have them drag. Like, straight up. There's just no world in which like a normal human fits into Balenciaga sizing. Uh, so... If you ever pick up these, get them in a smaller size. My waist is like a 30 and they're elasticated waist so the waist doesn't matter, but just look at this. 
And look at how wide the thigh is, okay? <laughs> I mean, my leg is like... <laughs> like, that's my actual leg. <laughs> These are the pant legs. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous, but, uh... Yeah, I just wanted to mention the sizing real quick because I think it's so ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so this is the hole I was talking about. Um, it has like an actual Balenciaga like button on it. Um, it like it like works and everything, but because these drawstrings are here and I don't like the way they look, I typically put them through like this little hole here. Um, so I thread them through like that, and then I I keep them inside because I don't like the way it looks um, when it's like visible. So usually I have it like this like where you can't see the drawstrings, um, but they are there in case you want to use them. Like, <laughs> again, I'm not like the tallest guy in the world, you know? I'm not a, I'm 5'10", I'm not a six plus Chad. If I walk in the room, you know, all the girls aren't gonna be on my dick cause you know, my height starts with six, but you know, look how, look, just look at how ridiculous this is and just take this in for a second that this is like a Balenciaga extra small. Let's go ahead and get on to the third fit. This one's actually gonna be the last fit, um, but let's go through it. I got the Balenciaga heavy piercing cap. Um, it's got like the piercings here, and then it's got like the classic notch that they've been doing on a lot of hats now to fit sunglasses. It's also got like Balenciaga embroidered somewhere here. I don't know if you can see it. It's in like white. Okay, <laughs> it's got Balenciaga embroidered here. Um, I get a size large on all my Balenciaga hats. Um, just because like they fit very small or like the hat overall is small. The actual like size of the hat doesn't really matter because you know it's like adjustable um, with the strap but like the actual like hat itself is small. I'll kind of explain that. I'll, I'll like make a separate video explaining that. But anyway, yeah, pretty like hyped hat, honestly. I, I think it's hyped for like a good reason. I really like these little like notch ring things. It reminds me of like old like K-pop style hats where they had like these notches. If you were around in that era, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and then it also has like one little detail in the back, this little like silver thing there. Um, pretty cool. I like the color too. It's kind of like a black faded. So I really like the color. Um, I like, I honestly wish that they didn't even embroider this on the bottom or if they embroidered it in like black, it's just kind of obnoxious. Like it's completely unnecessary, honestly. Um, I, I could totally do without this. Like I wish they didn't have that. Um, but that was a lot of time to spend talking about the hat. Um, hoodie is gonna be the Balenciaga Sporty B uh, small fit zip up. This one is a size medium. In 100% honesty, if I could like go back, I would probably get it in a size small just because it is the small fit and I want it to fit small like that's the whole point I got it but it fits almost like normal because I went with a size medium uh, it's not like terrible but I'm just saying like if I could go back in time I would probably get a small just so that you guys have like a reference um, it's just a faded black zip up you know dual zips it looks really good in my opinion I like the faded black of this as well um, and then the coat is the Balenciaga garderobe coat um, pretty sick piece you know it's got like the Balenciaga lining throughout. It's like fairly heavy, honestly. So again, this is like a very fall wintery coat. Um, you can button it up. This is a size 46. So that's what, like a small? I would say it fits actually pretty true. Like it's not crazy oversized. Um, it's like a full length coat. So the coat goes all the way down to your feet. Again, I guess if you were like taller or like a six plus Chad, maybe it wouldn't go all the way down. But I personally like the look of it being like a coat that goes all the way down. I just think that it looks a little bit better and kind of lends to the whole look. Um, it's got two pockets on the side. It's got some pockets on the inside. It's got like shoulder um, pads. I don't know, like, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Like the little shoulder type pads on them, which goes kind of out. Um, and I, I kind of like that like exaggerated look. And then the last cool thing about it is it has like this waist our hourglass shape, I think that's what they call it. So if you can see the waist actually like goes in a tiny bit and then comes back out. So I think on like women's wear Balenciaga coats, this shape is often a lot more exaggerated, but like, cause you know, they have like smaller waists and wider hips like anatomically, but for men, I still like the look, but I probably wouldn't go that extreme women's wear coat look, but I think they executed it very well 
on the men's look where it looks, you know, good, form fitting, you know, tailored, but also not like hyper feminine. Not that that's like a bad thing or anything, but I'm just saying for my personal style. Um, all that being said though, I probably wouldn't button it up for this look specifically. Um, so yeah, and then the pants, I got on the Acne Studios um, 19, no, 2021 jeans. Um, these are a size 31 by 32. Um, like I said, I'm normally like a 30 or so, but I picked these up in a size big, in a size bigger because I wanted them to fit a bit baggier. Um, I really like these jeans. Again, kind of with a lot of the pieces on this fit, it's a lot of like faded black looking things. Um, but these jeans are pretty nice. You know, they're pretty long too. They kind of go over a little bit. You know, you can see I kind of do step on them. Again, I'm not six plus, you know, maybe this is a common theme of this video. A lot of longer pants or whatever, or just not being tall enough, you know, kind of story of my life. But uh, <laughs> yeah, and then on the feet, I got on the Balenciaga Space Shoes. Again, probably my favorite shoes in my wardrobe. Um, really just not much to say. I've talked about these to death, but I seriously love them and I cannot recommend them enough. I personally sized up. I'm normally a size 41, but I got a size 42 because it's not like leather. It's like a polyurethane material. Um, so I wasn't sure. And I guess I've owned them oh, for a shit. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, real quick, my mic died. So it might be a little bit worse audio, but I'm just going to finish up real quick. Uh, I think I was talking about the space shoes. Um, oh yeah, I got them in a size 42 instead of 41. Um, because I wasn't sure if they would stretch. It's like this polyurethane material. Um, so it's not like leather, which molds to your feet or anything. I can say confidently about a year later, I am really happy that I sized up because <laughs> even a size up, they still feel a little bit snug, kind of in this like upper half area, like right where your foot slides in. So I'm really glad I sized up because it makes it a lot more comfortable and I can wear these a lot more easily. Um, they're not particularly comfortable shoes by any means, which is kind of annoying because they kind of just look like slippers and you'd think they'd be comfortable, but they're really not. And if they were comfortable, I'd wear them so much more. Um, but yeah, um, this is the final look. Okay, and then one thing I forgot to mention um, real quick is that this hood, it's got like the embroidery of like the Sporty B logo. I don't know if you can see. That's right. Um, so yeah, it's got that there. And then something to know about Balenciaga hoodies, if you guys didn't know, is that they have different hood sizes. So they have like small hoods, medium hoods, and like big hoods. Um, this one, like you'll know if you just look at like a product image, it's usually pretty obvious. But like, for example, a lot of their newer hoodies, they're doing like a small hood. And then a lot of their older hoodies, and by older, I mean like a year or two ago, they were doing like the big hood. So this one is the big hood. So let me show you what I mean by that. Um, if you see, like, let's say a normal hood would probably end like here, right? But this hood is super big. Um, like you can see if I just go to the side, like you can tell how big it is. Hold on. Let me take this off so you can actually see. Um, yeah, look at how big this hood is, right? Like even to the sides that it comes to, it's like a big hood. So there are pros and cons, obviously, in my opinion, the pro is that when you wear it with a hat, so specifically with a hat, this big hood covers like the entire hat. Like look at where the hood ends. It's like pretty much at where the brim of the hood, brim of the hat is, right? So that's like the super big hood. That's what I'm talking about. Um, so with the hat, I think it looks great because like the hood covers like the whole hat. Um, in this case, because it has piercings too, there's like a nice, nice little detail. And then from the side, you know, you can just barely see the hat poking out. Um, so I think it looks, the big hood looks really good with like a hat or a beanie because maybe like the medium or the small fit fits well on your head. But then when you add like a hat or a hoodie or a hat or a beanie, the hood is a little bit small. The other advantage is that for smaller hoods, if you wear the hood, sometimes it pulls the hoodie up. So like the shoulders of the hood get pulled up like this, like if this was a smaller hood, but because it's not, it kind of allows the rest of the hoodie to just relax. Um, now, obviously I just talked about the pros, but there are plenty of downsides. One of the main downsides in my opinion is that when you don't wear a hat 
or a hoodie, you can see how kind of ridiculously big the hood is. So this is the large fit hood. And as you can tell, if I'm not wearing a hat or a beanie, the hood covers like my entire, like I could literally cover my entire face with the hood. Um, and of course you might be like, just wear the hood normally. But if you do, there's like way too much fabric here, like on the side, it like bunches up on the side and it kind of just looks bad. Like if you, if you wear the hood, if you wear the large hood normally, it looks like pretty bad because there's so much extra fabric here. It just, it like folds and it just doesn't look that good. Um, so I just wanted to mention that real quick because I realized maybe a lot of people don't actually know that Balenciaga does different like hood sizing. And this one is, this hoodie in particular is the small fit, which refers to the body. Um, and then um, classic, like a bit shorter sleeves, but it also has the super big hood. So there are like, all the different combinations, right? Like a small fit, small hood, small fit, medium hood, medium fit, medium hood, medium fit, large hood, whatever. But this is the large hood. So this is what it looks like. It's quite ridiculous. And if you ever wear one, you will instantly be able to tell because look at how big this hood is. Again, I think the advantage is that if you wear a hat, it looks very good. I think this looks super sick. It holds the hood up. And then it, it also shows a little detail, but otherwise, um, there are pros and cons to both. Um, I would personally probably prefer like a medium fit overall because I'm not always wearing a hat or a beanie and it has quite a large hood shape. But uh, again, it's just pros and cons. And uh, I just figured I'd mention that real quick because I completely forgot during the on body earlier. So yeah. And then real quick, I also forgot to talk about the acne jeans. These are the 2021M. Um, they're faded black. Again, these are a size 31 by 32. So I typically, like my waist is maybe like here. And then I typically pull these down a little bit on my waist so that they kind of hang off a little bit. Um, you know, they've got some distressing details here and there. Uh, one thing that I will say that I don't really care for is they have these like pink um, string what is it, stitching details? I think they have like a bunch of them throughout the pant. Um, yeah, like pink here, just like, you know, some random pink details. Um, but one thing that I do really like or that I actually pay attention to is for like jean um, pockets. I really like it when pockets don't have like a design. Like you guys know what I'm talking about. Like Levi's, they usually have like a design on the pocket. A lot of pants have designs. It's not like an absolute make or break but one thing that I really like about acne jeans is that they don't have pockets on their they don't have designs on their pockets like it's just a square and I really like that they also have like a leather patch here I think it's actually I don't even remember if it says acne studios on there or not but it does oh it does okay but yeah um 2021 m kind of like a slit a straight fit I think they look really good um I like the color this is the faded black colorway. I actually went back to the Acme site to see if they're still in stock because I was considering picking up another one, but they're not. So I'm hoping that they restock it sometime in the future. Um, but yeah, these are the Acme denim. Uh, I just forgot to talk about these because I was wearing the coat. So I forgot to talk about both the hoodie and the pants, but uh, yeah, I just remembered now. Okay, so I just figured, you know what? I'm here. I might as well just film everything. I think I'm going to skip the part where I'm like on the couch and talking about the pieces. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, maybe because I feel like I can just talk about all the pieces now because there aren't that many. Um, but yeah, this is the Balenciaga garter robe coat. Um, as you can see, fully lined. One pretty cool detail that they did is some of them actually say Balenciaga and some of them say garter robe. So let's try and see. It's like this one says Balenciaga. And then this one right here says garter robe. Pretty cool little detail that they did there. Um, it's got the tag here, Balenciaga garter robe. Um, like I said, it's got the shoulder panel, so you can see shoulder uh, pa pa pads. So you can see kind of the padding there and then a nice little like drop off seam, which I think looks really nice. Um, it's kind of like a flowy, 
fabric. I forget what the blend is, but it gives it like kind of a sheen. Like, I don't know if you can tell, it's not like a matte black. It's like kind of a sheen and I really like that. Um, it's a pretty cool fabric. The collar, underneath the collar, you can see it's got this, I don't even know what material this is, wool maybe, um, under the collar. So if you did want to um, pop the collar up, there actually is like a little bit of contrasting there, which I think is pretty, like a neat little touch. Not that I would really ever pop the collar up, but um, just something to note. Um, and then it's got the side pockets. Um, and then on the inside, it's got some pockets as well. Um, yeah, like I said, a size 46, it fits pretty true. Like I wouldn't get this and expect it to feel super oversized. I would say this fits like a true small. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd talk about it real quick. Pretty cool piece. Um, it's got like a giant slit here in the back. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, like a giant slit in the back too. Um, but yeah, Balenciaga garderobe coat, size 46. I'm only going to do three looks for this video, um, for this rough cut. I have like a couple of reasons why. So I'm filming this in the end of 2023. And what I noticed, I looked back on my channel over the past year and I just noticed that like, I posted three JBC show episodes. So that's what, like a video every three to four months, which is pretty bad like in my honest opinion and then two rough cuts so that's even with those two rough cuts which you know I started this year to supplement like the other videos that's what like five videos in the year which is not a lot um I think it's kind of tricky because if you look at like other youtubers or like fashion youtubers who post a lot like maybe like weekly or monthly it might be like their job like they're a full-time, you know, YouTuber or content creator or influencer, or whatever. So they're posting, you know, like weekly vlogs or like monthly pickups, you know, and they're consistent and they post frequently. But that just can't be me because I have a job. I mean, this isn't my job. So like I can't post as much as them. Um, I don't go as out as much of them. So I wouldn't make as much vlogs. I don't buy as many clothes as them. So I wouldn't make as much pickup videos. Um, but I am trying to post more like what I can say is that at the very least in 2024 I'm gonna try to post more like JBC show episodes they take a long time like I really I'm not gonna stop making JBC show episodes they're the whole reason why I make the channel um really I want to post like videos where I showcase what I think a fashion YouTube video could be you know whether it be through my lens of like what would I want to watch or what you know do I wish was on YouTube or like I just think there's so much more that can be done than like vlogs or pickup videos and you know the generic formulas that you see everyone do um, so I'm really trying to push something like with more originality and more creativity and more me like what is Journey by Koi like JBC show episodes um, the rough cuts are nice because you know now I can supplement another video so you don't have to wait as long in between each video but it's still a long time um, in 2023 I like I said I posted five videos that's less than one less than every two months and uh i think i can do better so i'm gonna try to post more for 2024 part of that is gonna be making shorter videos so maybe i'll make like a pickups video because before or like right now i've been waiting to pick up like a bunch of pickups and then show them all in one video and the video becomes super long i get it like my rough cuts are pretty long um they're not you know very condensed and i also show like outfits in them and stuff but um i'm gonna try to show maybe a couple pickups here and then make a video and then an outfits and then like a couple pickups there instead of making like one video that only comes out you know once every couple months maybe i'll have like i'll break it up into smaller parts is what i'm trying to say and um, i think that could help um like me be more consistent or upload more frequently um but also like let me know what you guys think um if you like these longer more infrequent videos i really try to do like quality over quantity I'm not, just because I say I'm going to upload more consistently, I'm not going to upload like weekly vlogs that are like all shit and like I would never watch them on my own. But, you know, I still want to produce like things that I'm proud of or that like show actual effort or that I think are good and that I actually stand behind. So, um, yeah, I might try that out. Like, let me know what you guys think. Um, like maybe some some more frequent uploads, but maybe they'd be a little bit shorter, you know like a couple, you know, less scenes or a couple less pickups 
in each video and um, yeah that's my plan going forward um, I'm pretty excited I have like a couple of videos that are lined up I have no idea when this video is gonna upload but um, yeah if you guys are seeing this should be the start um, I guess that means if you guys are seeing this it means the Balenciaga diss track came out and the Big Cult came out and now you're watching the Big Cult rough cut so um, hopefully that's you know already more videos there than I've released in quite some time or at least more consistently so um, yeah I just want to say thank you for watching and uh, till the next one um, yeah I just wanted to say I really do appreciate it like you know I feel like a lot of people say that but for like smaller youtubers or more niche youtubers I feel like you know it kind of makes sense like proportionally it's a lot bigger for me um, I recognize a lot of the names that comment probably because you know I don't have a lot of people that comment so if you've been like a long time viewer I definitely definitely recognize your your name <laughs> um, your YouTube name or whatever um, so thank you a lot I appreciate all the new and old people um, I know I've been editing the rough cuts pretty heavily in the past but I think going forward I'll probably like the whole point originally was just like truly the name like a rough cut like minimally edited just like me talking in front of a camera I just put it together and upload it you know I want to spend more time on the JBC show episodes you know so I think going forward you know we'll see how this one this rough cut does but you know I would love to just truly release them like minimally edited just real quick that I can kind of upload for the people that are interested. Um, I'm planning, you know, different types of content as well, like TikTok style videos. And of course, you know, the JBC show and the Journey by Koi channel will hopefully see some more uploads in 2024. But, uh, you know, no guarantees, but, you know, I'll try my best. So, and uh, actually real quick before I go, I just wanted to make a quick thank you. Um, I'm going to put this kind of, thank you at the end just because I feel like you know most people probably don't want to listen to me talk and like talk about this kind of stuff but uh, for those of you that are here for that um, I just want to say thanks for watching uh, my videos and just in general but the big cult did really well I'm glad to see that because just because for a while I feel like the JBC show episodes I know that they're going to do worse than recent pickups videos I know that they're probably going to do worse than like vlogs or whatever you know, I, I understand that. I truly do believe that an audience for them is out there and, you know, it'll take time, but I trust that, you know, the JBC show will find its audience and, you know, that my videos will find their audience. So super, again, thank you to everyone who viewed, commented, left kind messages. I got a lot of kind messages, which surprised me quite a bit because I am not by any means a big fashion YouTuber or a big YouTuber in general. So. Thank you to everyone who sent me kind messages. I really do appreciate them. As well as, you know, everyone that just commented, um, watched the video, liked, whatever. Like, I feel like I never really formally do this. So I just want to say, I really do appreciate everyone watching. And I just want to thank everyone, truly. Um, you know, I feel like a lot of people say that, but I truly am super, super grateful and appreciative of everyone that watches. So um yeah i just want to say thank you um big plans going into the future you know i'm not planning on stopping anytime soon i have other things i want to do i have a job you know i have my life uh, this is just something i'm doing for fun on top of the fact that jbc show episodes take longer to produce um so you know i hope you guys understand and bear with me if you know it take longer to upload between videos you know it just it's just part of the channel you know so um I'm trying my best. Um, thank you guys for being patient as always. And uh, I just want to say, you know, I am trying to upload more for 2024. So hopefully, you know, that becomes a reality. And uh, yeah, thank you everyone for bearing with me and, you know, supporting the channel. And uh, yeah, I will probably just end it here because I feel like I'm just talking way too much at this point. But uh, thank you and uh, goodbye.